Okay, I have my mic on. And Nyla, we need to, oh, she's going to stay down there for a, little, a few more minutes, I'm sure, for others that come in. Can you wait a second? <laughs> I'm taking it. Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's worship for our first Sunday in Advent. And our theme for this Sunday is hope. And that is a good thing to have during these very difficult times that we are experiencing. I hope that everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that many of us could not be with our families, um, but thanks to technology, some of us could meet virtually. And I do hope that you felt the Lord's blessing as you thanked God for all the blessings that we have received. I have a few announcements before we get going this morning. First of all, right after our worship at 11 o'clock, we are going to have our congregational budget review meeting. And we will meet here in the sanctuary and also on Zoom for those who wish to participate while sheltering at home. And there is a link to that Zoom invitation on our Cuba First Baptist Facebook page. So if you have lost your email or didn't receive it, uh, you can go to our Cuba First Baptist Facebook page for that. Also, during this holiday season, I would encourage you to remember to give to our Retired Ministers and Missionaries Fund. Earlier this week, I received a wonderful letter from Larry Palma thanking you all for the support that you have given him and his family since retirement. And he had a whole lot of other things to say, and I left that letter at home. So I will bring it next Sunday and read it to you. I know that will encourage all of us quite a bit. Also, tonight is the Thanks Vent ecumenical service that is done by the Cuba Council of Churches. And that is going to be in person and also through Zoom, I believe, or it's going to be recorded, Bill. Okay, it'll be live streamed through the North Park Wesleyan Church Facebook streaming. So you can go right there to, to watch that. And that is at 6 o'clock. Six o'clock tonight. Also, a reminder that Grief Support Group is meeting via email, and if you would like to be included in that ministry or want more details, you can email Claudia Little at Claudia7 at, oh, that was Claudia Little7 at iCloud.com. And we are getting ready for Christmas. And we know that this Christmas is very different than the others that we have experienced. And so I want to let you know that Pastor Alex and I met through Zoom last week or the week before. Boy, the time gets all jumbled up. Um, but we had met, and we really felt that we should do just a pre-recorded Christmas Eve service. And so... Uh, we're asking, though, that as many of you will participate, because I know the one thing that we have missed the most during this time is seeing everyone and being able to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. And so um, that 
recording. We're going to do a very special candlelight lighting finale. And we've asked everyone that we could think of and, and that are on our lists to participate in that. And we're going to record the candle lighting on Saturday, this Saturday, December 5th at 6 o'clock. And so I believe the invitation has already gone out. I will resend it again. And we ask that each participant have one candle and we'll each be able to say just one short sentence and then a big, um, probably Merry Christmas at the very end. So I hope that all of you who are uh, internet capable can take part in that. If not, maybe you know someone who could help you out with that. But our goal is to really be together as much as we possibly can. And I think that is all of the, of the announcements that I have for us today. Uh, our budget review will Again, we'll be following our service, and if you need a proposed budget, there are copies out on the table, so you can help yourself to that. And so, now, let us center for our worship, and I would ask that Penny Green come and light our Advent candle, the candle of hope, and lead us through that liturgy. In our church and homes, we gather around Zeus to pray our lost hopes, broken peace, limited joys, and love so hard to find and share. In this season of coronavirus, we affirm that our candles mean we claim the power to call this season Advent, when God's light comes into the world and nothing can overcome it. We light the candle of hope in the face of COVID-19. Wildfires, hurricanes, closed businesses, lost pollinators, missing singing. God's hope shines on the hopelessness and brightens the path toward peace. For our Advent songs this Advent season, we'll be singing the verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And each of the verses starts with a prayer that begins with the phrase, O Come. And that includes an Old Testament reference for Jesus Christ the Messiah. And of course, the first Old Testament mention of the Messiah is Emmanuel. It's from Isaiah 7:14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And now the first verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come. Yeah. 
of the people. It is good to hear that several are doing much better, the people that we've been praying for. I'm so glad to hear from Henry that his son Blake is at home and recuperating well, and we will continue to pray for complete healing for Blake. It was so good that you could get to see him, Henry, and, and we are just so thankful and very happy. Also, we want to uh, be lifting up Gary. He is a friend of Patty Hibbard. We had been praying for his whole family. They had tested COVID positive and Gary had been in the hospital. He is still there. The other family members are doing very well. Uh, Gary is uh, having some heart difficulties and so we want to continue to pray for him. I think that's all of the, um, the folks that we're praying for now, of course, in our bulletin that you all received uh, through email lists those that we continue to be in prayer for. Um, and so we want to continue to lift those up and we'll collectively lift those up as we pray together for those. Our friend of the week is John Shelley, so please be sure to send him a note. Um, I'm sure that he would really appreciate being thought of, and, um, and that will be good. I think that's all the other announcements. Of course, um, we do want to get through our service in good time, and so let us go to the Lord in prayer. Please pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks and praise for all that you have brought us through. We thank you for the many blessings of thanksgiving. Even though we had not been able to gather as we usually do for most of us, we thank you, Lord, that you have provided other ways to, to communicate with one another, to have that sense of real belonging together as we celebrate. Lord, we pray for those who struggle in families for whatever reasons, and we ask, dear Lord, that you would surround them with your love, that you would guide them with, um, with your wisdom. We pray for those who are sick, and depressed, those who struggle with all kinds of issues in body, soul, and spirit. We ask that your healing grace would be upon them. And Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for every day and for the call that you have on each of our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would keep us in good faith, that we would follow you, that we would love you through loving others. We pray, dear Lord, that you would continue to make us sensitive to the needs around us and to reach out, to truly be the hands and feet of Jesus. Be with all those who are not with us today, dear Lord. Grant them uh, a special blessing of, of uh, joy and especially hope, dear Lord, that we have much to hope for in you. We thank you for all the healings that you have ministered. And we thank you, Lord, that we are never alone, that your spirit resides in and with us. So help us to keep the candle of hope burning. And burning in such a way, Lord God, that your face is seen behind our own. Lord, be with the unspoken needs of our hearts for those that we know need your special touch, your care, a word of encouragement and blessing. So hear us as we lift those to you silently in your name.
We also pray your blessing upon our congregational meeting following this morning's worship, that you, we would hear your word, your will, that you would lead us in your way. And Lord, I also think that of as COVID positive numbers are rising, those that work so hard, Lord, to combat this virus. We pray for hospital workers, doctors, nurses, first responders. We ask your grace, your strength, and your protection. And Lord, as we continue to celebrate Advent, we ask that you would speak to our hearts, that you would bless us to be a blessing, and that we would remember that you are always in our midst. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. we want to receive our, oh no, I'm moving ahead. We want to hear the word of the Lord <laughs> from the book of Mark, reading to you chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. And as always, listen for God's word to you as I read. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. 
and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the reading of God's holy word for us today. May he add his blessing to us through it. Well, the message is awakening to hope. And this may seem like a really bizarre and very scary passage for the beginning of our Advent season. We may wonder why it's even included in this season in the lectionary. What is interesting is that parallel versions of this scripture in Matthew and in Luke are also selected for the first Sunday in Advent in lectionary years A and C. This is year B. They all speak about the apocalypse as first prophesied in the book of Daniel, about a great suffering, the end of the world, and the coming of Jesus to gather his people. Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 25, I'd like to read those again. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Wow. This is not the serene, after a good night's rest advent that I want to envision or hope for. This is scary stuff. As I read this passage, though, I think back to a documentary that I had watched a couple of weeks ago on Apple TV. It's called Fireball, Visitor from Darker Worlds. And from the title, one would think that this is all about alien creatures from outer space seeking to inhabit our planet. It is really about a fascination with meteors that have hit the Earth since ancient, ancient, ancient time, and how these hits have shaped cultures all around the world. Meteors, or at least fragments of meteors, still hit our Earth, although not to the extent that gouged out the great craters that have been found in Arizona, Russia, India, Australia, and other places. One particular group of scientists, I forget where they were stationed, I think it might have been Australia. They say, though, that the big one will inevitably hit our Earth. And that will be horrible. 
because that kind of a hit will alter all life on Earth as we know it. So this group of scientists, they want to, the world to be ready for it, put some rudimentary plan in place, and so they keep watch with all their scientific instruments. They keep watch day and night. Hmm. I hope their plan is a good one. And perhaps this is the whole point of our scripture for Advent, not only to have a rudimentary plan that leads to hope in place, but also to act on it. So here we are, the first Sunday of Advent, focusing on hope. So let me ask you, what does hope mean to you? I think for most of us, it means that we hope that this COVID virus that has so radically changed our lives will be completely eradicated, that a viable vaccine will soon be on the market, and that it may be distributed widely. And we hope that we can be in groups again without the masks and social distancing restrictions. We hope that the pall of COVID has that the COVID has cast would lift completely, that doctors, nurses, hospitals, first responders, all the essential workers, that they would have relief, that small businesses would survive and boom again, that travel would not be restrictive, that our economy would improve, that important events may be shared and celebrated together and that hugs and pats on the back may be exchanged, that fear, anxiety, and uncertainty would subside. These are all good and necessary things to hope for, and so we should. But what does it mean to awaken to hope? I am reminded of a story about Rose Kennedy, who was interviewed by Parade Magazine in 1983 when she was 93 years old. The article was called, When Faith is Triumphant. She was asked about the great losses that she had endured in her long life and what she would say to her grandchildren, the Kennedy clan, what she would say to them. And she replied, I hope they will have the strength to bear the inevitable difficulties and disappointments and griefs of life. Bear them with dignity and without self-pity, knowing that tragedies befall everyone and that although one may seem singled out for special sorrows, worse things have happened many times to others in the world. And it is not tears, but determination that makes pain bearable. I believe that long before she had articulated this hope for her grandchildren, she had awakened to the hope in her own life. We see this in her own determination to make the pain bearable in life. Determination, resolve, willpower, purpose, the grit needed to wake up and move forward in the life we have been given. Rose Kennedy's Irish Catholic faith sustained her and gave her the determination to make life's tragic turns bearable. Amidst the hardships in life, she had truly awakened to hope. To awaken to hope is to open our eyes, see our world, and when we feel the pain of living, to get out of bed anyway. That is a good start. And for us who call ourselves Christians, there's more. It is a determination, the willpower, to trust in the promises of our Savior, who was born like us so very, very long ago, and who is coming again, whose purpose was to suffer the sins of the world so that we who believe in him will have the sure and certain hope of eternal life 
without pain, without sin, without sorrow. To awaken to hope is to see with eyes wide open the pain and suffering of our neighbors throughout the world and to respond as the Lord leads us. We cannot do it all, but we can all do our part to instill the blessed hope we have in the lives of others. Awakening to hope means that we order our own souls to be still and to know that the Lord is God. How do we do that? Especially when we are inundated by the bad news of the day every day. Well, I was thinking about the hymn, Be Still, My Soul. And here are some affirmations and guidance written in, this, in the beloved lyrics. It's been around for a long time, so I'm just going to sum it up. I won't sing you the hymn. I will spare you that, and I'm sure that's a hope realized. <laughs> but in that hymn, it says, Be still, my soul. The Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave it to God who will provide. Thorny ways lead to a joyful end. God guides the future as, guide, as God has guided the past. Let nothing shake your hope or confidence. The time is coming when we will be forever with the Lord. All disappointment, grief, and fear will be gone. Sorrow will be forgotten. Love's purest joys restored. All safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. This, dear friends, is the hope for each of us every single day. As we await the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, we awaken and watch. We trust and anticipate. I think the Apostle Peter said it best about this living hope that we have in Jesus. First Peter Chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. And his directive to live a holy and hopeful life is in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Discipline yourselves. Set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when he is revealed. May it be so. Amen.
time we want to dedicate our offering and again I remind you if you've forgotten to put it in the offering box on the way in you can still put it in the offering box on the way out God is good to us and God always gives us enough and he gives us enough to share and so let us stand for the doxology Now let us dedicate our offering to God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you for the hope that you've given us and for the call to serve you in this world. We do pray, Lord, that our offering would, would be a respite, that it would ease the suffering of many. We ask, Lord, that you would receive it, multiply it, and send it forth to sustain our ministries, to uplift the people, and to provide needs wherever you may wish them to be served. In Jesus' name, we gladly and joyfully and generously dedicate our gifts to you. 
Amen. Our benediction is one that we're all going to say together. So if you'd like to remain standing, I will lead you in our benediction. Emmanuel, God be with us in the week to come, lighting hope on the wick of our lives so that we may shine on our world. Amen. Amen. Go with God. Thank you.